What is up everyone? Welcome back to your fourth JavaScript tutorial and in this tutorial I'm going to be talking to you guys about all the different types of variables that we can use when working with JavaScript. So the first type I want to talk to you guys about is what I showed you guys before and that's just basic numbers. So go ahead and let's make a variable. I'm going to call my tuna because I love tuna, why not? And set it equal to your favorite number. Mine is 20. And then go ahead and this is a statement so we need to end it with a semicolon and then on the next line let's go ahead and print this out so if you remember that the way that we print out things in JavaScript is document dot write and then inside parentheses we go ahead and write the variable name which is tuna and then go ahead and press semicolon and now whenever we see it on our web page it prints out that variable so we can see already that you can set numbers equal to variables but what you didn't know is that you can also set numbers with decimal points equal to variables so go ahead and add a decimal point to your number save it and then go ahead and see what happens so aside with whole real numbers JavaScript can also work with decimals as well and if you're wondering this alright can JavaScript also work with negative numbers well let's go ahead and see go ahead and type a negative number in there and yes it's true my friends JavaScript can handle negative numbers perfectly so basically any number that you would want to work with in computer programming JavaScript can handle so now that we cover numbers let's go to the next thing and that is text now text in JavaScript and in all computer programming languages is actually called strings uh, why they named it that I don't know maybe it's because a string of letters put together who knows don't blame me blame whoever made JavaScript but anyways if you want to set a variable equal to a string of text go ahead and set it equal to quotation marks and then go ahead and type your text in here now go ahead and save this and see what happens it prints out whatever text was in there so again if you ever want to set a variable equal to you know a sentence or a word or just a little bit of text you need to add those double quotation marks and the reasoning behind that is if you set it equal to something like tuna equals text and you don't have the quotation marks JavaScript is going to think that you have a variable right here and you're trying to set it equal to another variable called text so that is why you need your quotation marks to say no this isn't another variable it's actually a word or a sentence or something like that so once you do this it'll work fine basically don't forget to include the quotation marks so now a little problem pops up and that's what if you're you know wanna have a variable and set it equal to you know a saying or something like John said boy do I love Bessie well whoa why is stuff turning blue and anyways let's go ahead and save this and see what we want it doesn't work at all and the reasoning behind this is because your entire string of text needs to be in between quotation marks so it's gonna say alright you have tuna you have a quotation mark here you have your ending quotation mark here and this is what I'm gonna set equal to but what the heck is all this stuff if you already gave me two quotation marks well actually JavaScript's not smart enough to know that this is a saying and that this is actually part of the variable so in order to tell JavaScript that alright these quotation marks here are supposed to be inside the variable itself we need to add something called an escape character now what an escape character does is it takes the next character and it pretty much treats it as a regular piece of text so this and this are escape characters now JavaScript knows that this and this are the two quotation marks and everything in between here is just going to be basically your variable so go ahead and save this and now we get our quotation marks to pop up John said boy do I love Bessie and he really does by the way Bessie's a cow not you know a regular cow like a dairy cow I'm not making fun of anyone here but anyways on with this tutorial so anyways if you ever need to escape something then that is the you know that's the symbol you use a backslash so there are different things that we need to escape but I'll teach you guys those as we come across them now let's go ahead and delete all this and let me talk to you guys about two different types of variables so we already learned about numbers and we already learned about text aka strings so 
there are two other types of variables that I want to talk to you guys about and the first one is called boolean or boolean however you say it and that's the word true and the world and the world I keep saying world like the earth and the word false now I'm not gonna go over boolean right now but just remember that they have special meaning in JavaScript. So that's why whenever you, you know, you might be looking at a program and it says true or false, then that is how you make a boolean. But again, don't even worry about it right now. Um I shouldn't have even said anything. But now that I'm going to confuse it, I might as well mention this. The fourth type of variable is called null. And whenever you set something equal to null, it means that it has no value at all. And this is different than zero. It's completely different than zero or 0, 0.0. Null is pretty much like an empty variable. And again, just with true and false, you'll be seeing what these do later on. But for now, I just wanted to cover all the different types of variables, so I had to include it. But anyways, um, I didn't mean to confuse you. Just remember that you can use numbers, and if you use letters, then go ahead and put them in between quotation marks. So once you understand that, we're ready to move on to the next tutorial. So anyways, thank you guys for watching. Uh, don't forget to watch the next tutorial, and I'll see you guys later.